Welcome back everyone. As we said, on top of the hour, we will be talking about marriage and finance today on the show. And of course, uh, most people are already in relationship or wanting to be in relationship, whether you're a woman or a guy. But do we actually take the time and talk about finance and relationships, particularly marriage? I don't think so. And that's why today on The Sister Show, we felt the need to bring the experts for you guys. Sarah, all the way from Portland. And then also we have Hilda, all the way from Washington State. You guys remember Hilda from the episode before. Thank you for having me on the show. My name is Sarah Van Hoos. I'm a Ramsey Preferred uh, Personal Finance Coach. And I help people get more intentional with their money, really make a plan for it, and walk with them in encouraging accountability. It doesn't have to be as hard as we make it. Uh, and so I'm, I'm there to be a guide to help people. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. We're excited. I'm going to need your help. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> I think I'm doing okay. Anyway, uh, how are you, Hilda? Hi, everyone. I'm Hilda. I am a mom and I've been married for 10 years now. Um, actually, this year makes it my 10 year anniversary. I do not have professional experience with finances, but marital experience, I do. I hope to learn more. I'm still learning. I'm still growing. But this is a very important topic that I feel like every woman and every man should actually talk about before marriage and continue to talk about. So I'm glad to be here and I'm a great fan of the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Hilda, for coming back right here on The Sister Show. And if you're watching right now, don't forget to share this video as you're watching. Share it on your Facebook walls so that we can expand The Sister Show community, like we always say. And continue to comment below as we have this conversation. It's not about us. It's about the community. So make sure you join in the conversation and comment below as we have this important discussion today, as they said, finance and marriage. So the first thing I want to ask is, when and how important is it to actually discuss finance in relationship life? Well, I do think it's important to have this conversation before you get married, uh, but it, it all kind of depends on the fastness of your relationship. Are you moving quickly in that direction or, or is it kind of slow? It's not second or third date material. Okay. Yeah. Amy, you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not something that should be put on that agenda. Uh, but certainly something that you should talk about before you talk about that with a potential partner or potential spouse. You really need to make sure that you're clear with what your values are around your finances with yourself as an individual first. So the focus should be on your financial uh, stability or whatever first before you even think about your partner. Yes, yes, absolutely. I think if you take some time to uh, understand what your values are with money, what some of your own goals and dreams are with your money before you, you know, put your monies together or before you share some of those problems, some of those challenges or some of those opportunities, first, you got to get clear on your own uh, financial situation before you put it into a marriage. So how do you bring it up, right? How, how do you, because I want to get practical here so I could learn and the people that are watching can also learn from it. For those that are single and not married yet, like I said, I'm sure a lot of people that are already married have bring it up before, right? I mean, especially Africans. This is not something that we talk about lightly, right? We talk about often before we get married. So for the people that are not married, it's like, what's, what's the best way to actually bring it up? I'm pretty sure Sarah will have great ways to bring up this topic. You have to, first of all, before you come into conversations like that, you have to have a goal in mind. What do you want to achieve? And in, in the sense that you're going into marital relationship with this person, I think the goal is to know as much details as possible. So you know that you are both in the same directions in terms of your goals. If you have that in mind, it will be easier to go from there. Okay, so how do you bring it up? Sarah, how, how are we supposed to bring it up? Me, myself, and a bunch of single ladies that are dating or about to date, how do they bring it up? Yeah, I like to recommend that m many of my clients go on what we call a dream date. It's not professional advice, it's just some practical advice. And uh, typically the clients that I'm working with have been married for a little while and they're, they're struggling with their finances and trying to get on the same page. So having this dream date earlier on in uh, the relationship certainly is not going to hurt anything. Again, like make sure that it's you're not date number two, like it's not what I'm saying. Uh, but when you get to that right, that right point, and really what a dream date is, is a time for you to sit down and share your goals. 
what are some of your goals and ask right. financially yes yeah financially but well like all of your dreams right even your career field even those things that you want to do if you want to travel mm. they take money uh, money yep. is sort of embedded in all of those things so talking about all of your dreams does circle around to how you handle your money and are you handling your money now the way that's going to put you towards your goals later mm. so having that conversation early is important so Dr. J, how would you say your younger sisters and your young self to bring this conversation up? What's the best way? Well, I just learned something from Sarah, which I think is absolutely amazing that she said a dream date. When you're in a relationship and the guy always asks, what do you like to do? What do you love to do? If you love to travel, how are we going to finance it? Are you financially stable to travel? Yes, Some people too may just not even have plans. Mm. So if you don't have a plan, then let's talk about how we're going to plan for ourselves together because people just leave life and don't think about a lot of these things, having a family, raising kids, it costs money. It's like a critical aspect of getting married, right? Because I think in the data it shows that what 50% of divorces as a result of finances so that's that's like a very very important topic of course but it's it's very sensitive too especially for us like in the african communities it's right right it's not something that we <laughs> that we talk about right? yeah because yeah. um normally if i'm just imagining okay dating the african god right hilda you can help me here because you're from nigeria <laughs> it's just not just gambia right and then you say um so today i want to talk to you how are your finances what are we going to do finance but they no, were but like, that's not how you approach it, do it. You're not just going to say Okay, so, how you so teach me. I'm trying to figure it out. Right? <laughs> so so I, I think like Sarah said, maybe like if you go on a, on a dream date, you could figure out a way to bring up that question. And, and it may be like, okay, what are your thoughts about saving? Like how okay. much do you like to save a month? Something okay. like that, right? Like just bring it up casually. But it's not like, uh, do you have bankruptcy on your credit <laughs> report or something like that? Okay. Right? So... <laughs> Yeah, so it's basically just broaching it just like you would talk about anything like kids, like how many kids you want to have, like what are your okay. plans for the future, what does your career look like. So I think the finance too, it's just part of that planning aspect, even though it's sensitive, but we have to talk about but it. But I like how you say to approach it that way, like, okay, do you want to get married? Do you want to have kids? So then it's like, okay, how do you like saving? So that makes a little bit more sense. The way I was going to approach it, I, that would have been, I, I, that, they would have dumped me tomorrow. <laughs> Well, I think also don't don't forget to you can lead with yourself. Like you can share about what some of your goals are. Like I have a savings goal of doing, you know, whatever you want to share. Like what's yours? You know, if you you want to you can show your cards first and mm -hmm. uh, share a little bit more about your situation and then hopefully in the reverse they'll also share about theirs and you'll get to learn and just open up the conversation from there. But you Got you it. can start and lead it. Oh, I love this. Makes so much sense. Um I'm learning a lot. <laughs> Good. Hopefully Hopefully the audience that is watching is you guys are also learning. Continue to comment below and let us know what how would you approach it? What would you say? And then if you're a guy, how would you bring it up to a woman? Because also I'm pretty sure men also are curious, especially nowadays. Back then when our parents were growing up, it was always the men that were the breadwinner. But now both women and men are breadwinners. So I'm sure a lot of men are also curious about the woman's financial stability most of the times right uh, we want to hear how would you bring it up if you're a guy and you're watching what's the best way to bring it so that the woman would be like what is he trying to find a sugar mama or it's what it's important to point out that especially for the african men um that women don't approach it too seriously and that could be a deterrent uh, men could see that as you wanting to know all about their finances and what 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 they have currently in their account and how they plan to spend their money um, it's important to make it casual and gradually ease into it. Um, mm. for incomes and assets that the man or the woman already has prior to meeting or prior to dating. I feel like it's important to share those during the course of the conversation, especially if you know that something in your account details can have a positive or a negative impact on someone, like if you're in debt, that's something that someone should know about before they go into a relationship with you. Transparency oh. is very important. Wow. This is really? such an uncomfortable conversation. <laughs> you may be uptight because uh, there is not that of an open relationship, 
all you need to know at that point when it's still tight is have fun talk about your goals in life what do you want to achieve in life what are your aspirations so if this person is not a go-getter and you are a go-getter definitely don't even push it because you are going to get frustrated in the long run so once mm. you pass that first initial stage and now you know you have the chemistry about you have the same goals in life and you and you know all of that is there most likely that person would not have that much of a negative impact on your life financially but if someone is so when relaxed, you bring it up Yes, if if this person is so relaxed and all they want to do is get an eight to five job and do nothing else and just get the most minimum wage and don't do much for their their lives, definitely you are going to run into a problem because that's the same person that likes the luxury but does not want to work for it. Yes, it's a good red flag if you want to talk about it and the person is uptight about it. Is, is that a red flag, Sarah? It probably depending on the timeline. If it's if it's something that you're building trust with and you're opening up about your situation or some of your goals and they're still really closed about it, yeah, I would call that a little bit of a red flag. So Sarah, sp speaking of red flag, at least in the US, we have we have the ability to be able to pull somebody's credit report to look through their credit yes. report. In Africa, I guess it will not be a credit report. I don't think do credit reports in Africa, but it may be it will be someone knocking at their door. Just go and stand by the house and see how many people are going to be coming to ask them for their money back. Once you get to the point where you know this is serious, you're going to be getting married, you're going to be um, combining your finances, then I think it's a good thing to sit down and figure out like, okay, how much loan does that person own at the bank? Right? Because in Africa, I think there's a lot of like loans with interest. Mm. Um, maybe, maybe the houses that they owe, like, is there any lien, like bank lien? So to kind of like understand it from that perspective. Whereas in the U.S., you could easily pull up a um, credit report, and I think if they've had maybe like any bankruptcy, because that's going to like impact you yourself. And I think sometimes helping, uh, just talking about it, is helping both of you guys because it may be one of you is not really financial savvy with money, whereas mm -hmm. maybe the other one is like very very financial savvy. So you guys could like sit together and figure out like how to resolve it instead of waiting until you get on the, to the marriage and then you find out, oh, this person has uh, loads and loads of maybe student loans, bankruptcy. Totally agree with you. In in um, Africa, though, uh, especially in Nigeria, while we don't have credit reports and ways of monitoring someone's finances officially, um, what something that they do in my part of Nigeria is before an actual marriage takes place or while you are getting serious, the family of the bride, um, always sends a delegate, kind of like an investigative team oh, that cool. into the history of the man Whoa, and the family okay. <laughs> that they are planning to get married to. Um, now we see that these are actually very beneficial because if they are hiding something, um, and it goes both ways, the man's family could do it. If something is hidden, it actually uncovers a lot and it helps families come together and it helps you to know more about your partner. It's unofficial, uh, but it's I feel like it's a good step. So we have to set up an investigation team, Ole and Dr. J. Investigation <laughs> panel in Gambia. For all your, wait, wait, okay. I think Ole is gonna set it up. So for all her single sisters um, that want to get married, Amy and Dr. J. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. know, you know what, thinking about it, I think we should start a business like that. The sisters, oh, Lord. three marital <laughs> financial investigation, and we can start all the women that are wanting to get married, they can log into their account and we'll tell them all about them. <laughs> well, they can head it. Uh, she's like the queen of investigating things online. Like, and she could come up, she could definitely find out the answer. After the investigation, we'll get Sarah and Hilda and Ole and then they'll come up with a financial planning and tell you what you need to spend, how much you need to save to eradicate the debt. And I think once that can be done, you will have a happy marriage. <laughs> because that's very important to talk about uh, the plans that you have, the goals that you have, how much you need to spend every month to achieve your goals in terms of savings and the future of your kids or retirement. These are things that definitely needs to be talked about. And I cannot uh, wait to learn more from Sarah as to what she has to offer. In that. So important, Dr. J. Um, making a plan for your money is just a really critical kind of foundation to having financial success. So sometimes I call it a budget. Sometimes we call it a spending plan, depending on whatever you're more comfortable with, right? There's some, some freedom when we call it a spending plan. 
But really what I want everybody to do is making a plan for your money. Um, write out all of your income each month and then all of your expenses and make sure that your expenses obviously are less than what your income is. And making sure that also you have got some wiggle room or some extra room in your budget to go towards your goals. Maybe your first goal is to have a little bit of emergency emergency fund set aside. That's a terrific first goal. And uh, next up, you need to make sure that you make a plan to get out of debt. Like just like we were talking about, whether it's your debt or you're married now and it's your combined debt, make a plan for all that leftover money that you have each month to go towards paying off your debt. And then you have got some room to start saving for retirement, start investing in kids' college funds, if that's something that's important to you, and really going and chasing those next dreams that you have. But super important that you make a plan for your money. Uh, there's this program, this is in um, Nevada. Not but pretty much like the way it works, you could actually start like saving for your kids' um, college. And the way it works is like, like you put, let's say example, every month, um, two hundred dollars, and what what they do? It's handled by the state. By the time the kid graduates and uh, to go to college, whatever the college tuition uh, at that point, they're going to use that money towards that. It's school. called in Texas. It's called the Texas Tomorrow Fund. So basically, yeah. what you're when you pay for it right now, they're going to charge you for the same price that the college is at now, and that's how much yep. they're going to charge you for later. So it's called the Texas Tomorrow Fund, and I think each state has a different name for it, but it's basically the same uh, concept. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of uh, college funds, uh, that is also very important. So obviously, once you get married, you still will deal with the, the financial issues, and I'm sure a lot of people, like Ole said. Uh, the 50% of people are divorced based because of financial issues, right? Uh, that's what statistics show. So in order to avoid that, while you are actually married, so right, what are some of the steps that the married people can actually do to continue to prosper and avoid financial issues in their marriage? Once you've passed the dating side and now you're married, you've passed the honeymoon, now you're in reality right? <laughs> what practical steps can you do in terms of joining assets and finances versus splitting it and so on? I think uh, first and foremost, communication is a huge part of marriage, uh, marriage in general, right? But also with your finances. So I think it's really important to have uh, at least a monthly check-in where you're being really intentional about that conversation about your finances. Uh, this is what we have going on coming up in this next month or even in the next year. Having that conversation is really important. Um, there's always going to be somebody in the marriage that is going to be the heavy when it comes to dealing with the bills, dealing with the budget, dealing with the finances, and that's okay. Um, but don't, if that's you, um, don't go it alone. You still need to engage your partner and say, hey, this is what we have going on. Don't, don't hold it all on yourself. Uh, be sure and include them within that communication so you can make a plan together. Even if you're the one that's pushing the, you know, doing the keyboard, paying the bills online, writing out the checks, still engage your partner in that conversation. That that's, would be first and foremost, making sure that that communication is important. And I'm a big advocate also for, for joining your finances, for blending and combining your finances overall. Some couples can be successful doing it separately, um, but I'm I'm of the opinion that when you come together in marriage, you're, you're all coming together and it includes your finances too. It really um, helps you stay on the same page overall. Oh God, I'm, I'm literally sweating because I'm just... <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to confess to you guys in the show today. Commitment makes me claustrophobic. Because, <laughs> you know, you guys know I'm just as free spirited, right? So, like, confining and saying all these structures is just making me nervous. Like, maybe that's why I've been single for this long. <laughs> this is horrible. Maybe, maybe you could, this is your therapy session. So, take it <laughs> in and. But this therapy is hard work because my heart, I'm just like, oh my God, this is like so claustrophobic. This is like this, all these structures and all this. So you just want to wing it. <laughs> I guess that's what I was going to do, but now you guys are waking me up. Like who else here that's listening that's single feels the same way so I don't feel alone. Like, is it normal that I'm like, I, like, it's not normal? Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm just like, oh my God, what are we doing this year? How much are we spending? What? Is, ah, okay, Sarah, go, go ahead. <laughs> oh, so I totally agree with Sarah. And, and it, the best way to go about this is to have um, kind of a blended spending, have your husband, a husband and a wife put their resources together and tackle their goals head on together. Um, but in some cases, especially speaking as an African, 
um, a Nigerian. Some of um, our families are not that into putting every resources together. Everyone oh. seems to want their independence and that's okay. I feel like if you can find something that works for you, something I personally do with my husband, although we both work and we both bring in income, um, we are also independent in a way. At the end of each year, we have a set plan, a goal for the next year. And we also talk about how we want to achieve that financially. Um, we put in our resources for those specific goals. And then we also have our independent spending. And we also have our emergency fund and we know mm. the certain amount that goes into the emergency fund. We know what goes into the plan. And we know what we have individually to do with whatever we want to do. Oh.